All right. So we are back. This is Baron J67. And I'm T Jones. Getting it right. I'm yeah. getting it right. Yeah, he's not X T Jones. The X is a placeholder. Yeah, all, ca- man, all caps. Took my name. Somebody took my name, son, and I can't <laughs> I can't rock with no period or no two S's or two O's. I need the full T Jones. <laughs> So we are back and we are making some new adjustments. We're trying to, once again, we already said this before and we're going to keep saying it. We want to keep growing. We want to keep offering a better, improved experience. And now you're actually getting to look at us crust in the eyes and all while we, right? While we record. (laughs) Hey, so we're we're just, this is a new step too. Cause it's like, we've never, we, I mean, we have our channels, we do stream and do things like that, but this is actually talking into the camera. Yes. Like look into the camera, you know, speak loud. I know. I feel like I'm live streaming. (laughs) Like I'm sitting here getting my shimmy on like, what's up? So how y'all doing? So this ain't a fur coat. It's a blanket. Cause it's cold out here, Mm -hmm. but it ain't like East coast cold, but it's still cold. It's cold in Chicago, though. Yeesh, man. Cold. But, okay. Hey, I wonder if it's cold in Wakanda. Wakanda. I wonder, does it ever get cold? Well, the the big-ass coats they was wearing, I know it's cultural garb, but they was wearing some big-ass coats. But, okay, (laughs) speaking on that. Speaking of Speaking on Wakanda and Black Panther. Now, I, it, I'm not going to sit here and jock ride it 100% because I do got some small issues. But all in all, I loved that movie. I thought it was okay. I thought it was an immediate classic um, yeah. for the simple. And then I was pleasantly surprised at the themes they addressed because the trailers, the everything in the trailers, which I'm happy I got juked by the trailers. I didn't expect them to touch on the themes that they touched on such as um the the differences between africans or wakandans africans and african americans black people you know and we can dive a little more into that but go ahead what did you think about it all right well i the one thing i was seeing about it when it after the weekend hit was that it was like bad character development and um, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say that th- this is just one part. I'm going to address this right now. Okay. Um, I don't think it was bad character development. I think that they, the only person that they needed to develop in this movie was Killmonger. Everyone else, we already knew. The king was dead. New king. He's the new king. He's also Black Panther. What more did we need to know from them? There was no tragedy other than the king dying. There was no problems in Wakanda mm. until Killmonger came. So the only character that really needed to be developed is Killmonger. The only person that we as the audience needed to need to have to like have a look into and figure out where he came from. And you know, and to be honest, I caught it, I called it once the movie started, like right at that part. I called it that that you know, I said it to myself. And um said what i i just said that one of them kids was his son the kid that looked up first was his son i said that i kind of said that and uh or I, I said it to myself like i said but the reason why um i think they did a great job in developing killmonger is because you could you get to see where his anger come from and you have to like as you have to understand where he was coming from you know what i'm saying like how can you tell him he was you could tell him he was wrong in the way he was trying to go about it. But what he wanted but wasn't his wrong. thought process and what he wanted wasn't wrong. So let me knocking that out the woods, I think that was, I didn't have a gripe with that. I just wanted to, you know, give my point on it. The movie as a whole was dope. I thought, the and I'm, I'm so harsh on movies today, in today's day and age, only because they're so predictable. With this yeah. movie, with this movie, they went the length with the movie making it giving it really good storylines there wasn't as much action i would love to have seen especially with black panther i really wanted to see some like off top you know i I guess the fighting scenes where he wasn't black panther when they took his powers away from him um those were good Mm -hmm. but i wish there was some like more epic you know epic stuff going on other than that i think 
The movie was a great storytelling was amazing. Um, the characters were dope. The accents were on point. Um, and then everything else that they, and, and you know what else, you know what else they tricked me on and you know what I kind of was pissed off, but in the end I was kind of like, I'm cool that they didn't do it. They said nothing about any of the Avengers. Mm-hmm. Any, they said nothing about the Infinity War. They said nothing about none of the other characters. And I'm like, you know, I was like, I was a little bit mad, especially as a Marvel fan. But at the same time, I was like, you know what? This, th- we needed this. This was nothing to do with anything else other than the, the king, the original king dying. There was no talks of nothing outside of Wakanda and what Wakanda was to them. And um, yeah, man, I think this movie was great. Uh, I don't know on a number scale what I would give it. It's it's not a 10. I, I won't call it a 10, but up, I would give it up. It's up there. The movie was great. This is a movie that you can rewatch. Uh, your kids are going to love it. The characters are dope. What they talk about in the movie is understandable. And then you can show it shows like how this isn't just some like power trip. Like this is really a culture. Yeah. This is really something going on inside this story, inside this storyline. So for me, man, I love the movie, man. I, I will actually go and watch it again today. And there was enough time. Right. 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 Um, you know what? Um, my only gripe with the movie, uh, and then I'm, I'm going to talk about this negative and then I'm going to jump on all the positives. Um, was the fact that I felt any time Killmonger or Michael B. Jordan, any time he had anything more than a one-liner, he sounded corny. Um, he he. I'm gonna ask you. I'm, oh, go ahead. Before so, I'm gonna say something to that. Okay, so he sounded corny to me, and I felt like they they really tried to tried their best to embody a modern day radical African American person, and with yeah. anger towards. Wakanda or Africa, which is which is cool because that's actually the big theme. Like, hey, I'm mm-hmm. let y'all left me out. Like, y'all don't even yeah. y'all don't check on me. You left me out. Like, I more African American people or black people um, that I talk to, most people say they wanted Killmonger to win. <laughs> like, yeah, be, like <laughs> because I, I can answer that too. Why I think, at least, because I've I've seen that a lot. I've seen a lot of people say, "Yo, I relate more with Killmonger." Why though? And, you know, and, uh, more more Africans will relate with them. There's, there is a difference between you, you see what I'm saying. There's a difference between that without getting too like yeah, I got you, you know on the issue. But um, a lot of a lot of people can understand where Killmonger comes from. You know where. You know, he he grew up in the rough time, grew up in a rough neighborhood, had to struggle. We 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 get that. Um and then and to then, know was, that you got this mythical place that has all the resources, all the success, all the technology, all the advancements where you're medically actually from. from he's he's from there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No. But yet you're sitting here but struggling. This is, this is what made the movie so great though. The fact that that the main character that uh, Takala understood that his people had made a mistake. T'Challa. You know, his pe or T'Challa. My bad. I call him Black Panther. I don't call him by his real name. So. <laughs> um, for him to understand that, hey, man, we made a mistake. We we didn't we didn't do what we were supposed to do. This is why second time he spoke to his dad, you can hear the like the disappointment in him. He went like, off. Yo, man. Like, yo, I, I don't want to be with you right now. Spoilers. I, I got to fix this right. Super spoilers. But Man, by, it's, time, it's, by the time y'all watch this, the internet <laughs> didn't spoil everything. Yeah, I, I literally one day after the movie came out, I knew pretty much the whole movie. But, um, and that's that's and that's where I thought it was cool because it was cool to for them to say, yo, we really messed up. Like, and genuinely show it. Like, yo, I messed up, but... The only way I could fix this is if you not king and we're actually still a part of this thing going on cuz I didn't die and I didn't give up. So one of us got to die. And you knew you knew uh Michael B Jordan or Killmonger wasn't going to give up. You, yeah. It, he the way he was raised, the way they talked about him being raised, the the resentment he had towards the people of Wakanda, 
he was not going to concede to defeat. This is why when he was like, yo, we could still save you, he said, Psh. and the, the line he said has been, it's Dude. a quote, and it's been quoted on the internet, and it was the dopest thing, but I think, I don't think he understood, like, yo, yeah, you messed up, but I, we feel you. Like, yeah, you might be locked up, but I don't really think if, let's, let's, let's be conspiracy theorists right now. Do you think they would have actually locked him up? I think if he was if he would have seen the light, if you think he would have seen the light and like yo, I really messed up, you know, you are the king. Do you think he would have? I they would actually. Let me tell you exactly what I think would happen. I, I think that T'Challa, his council would have told him to lock him up. Everybody would have wanted him to be locked up, but T'Challa would have secretly mm-hmm. let him loose. Yeah, and acted well, like he escaped. I, I would. I was low key about to give some uh, spoilers on w- The Walking Dead, but I'll I'll save that one. <laughs> As you should. Um, Keep that to yourself. Yeah, but no, it's the and and that was a cool that was something cool about the movie that I liked too. I en- I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the fact that the superhero, the the hero of the story, showed that there was he that we flawed. We we have a flaw in the way we're we're living. It decided to change that all about their society so i that you know this movie made me really think like really made me break down a lot of stuff because it's movies that come out nowadays that you watch it and it's kind of like okay cool and then you forget about it but this movie is so many different things could have happened what if he michael what if uh killmonger didn't die you know what if uh you know it it, it, so much things are going on and and let me jump in on that Actually, I read an article and I wish I had it on me. Uh, Somebody wrote a real critical article saying that now I got here we go with another example of the African-American man, the the U.S. black man being killed again. (laughs) And I was like, oh, damn, because you think he was like he was like, I already have issues with my president. My president already don't like me. Now I got a dude in a costume who looked like me. Also killing me because let's be honest, who does Michael B. Jordan represent? Us. Okay, and and this is me looking at it from the flip side. If if you as a society, if you had something that you knew that if the world knew you had, uh, they people would want to take it from you. Mm-hmm. And the only way to secure that you your people believe to be is to just store it, not talk about it. You know, force field around all of us. Let people think we're a third world country and we'll just rock like that for the rest of our life because we don't want this to get into the wrong hands. You will do everything you possibly had to protect that. And that's why I'm not king. What? That's why I'm not king. Because I wouldn't be able to make that decision. (laughs) Yeah, you know, I could. I could. I I could. I think I would have been. I think I would have leaned more towards uh, Killmonger's way. Um. Not more, not more violent, not more uh, aggressive, as aggressive as he thought. But I do think, yeah, stepping out and helping other people, and 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 doing what's best for the. And in the movie, it did. They did that. He went up and bought the whole block. Okay, Oakland. let me let me let me tell you that, and let let me tell you this too. And that actually falls into that same article. And this part I really agree with. You could have went and bought a country. You could have went and bought a whole nother country and been like, this is where we, this for us. Let's, we got to right, like, let's be, real, <laughs> let's be realistic here. Come on, he, man. He took all, he took all his multi billions and went and bought three buildings. Yeah. But you got to think of the significance of that building, man. LeBron you know, James put more show... people through school than T'Challa. <laughs> hey, and you know, what's funny. Let me ask you a question though. Where, where would, where where do Wakandas get their money from? They you don't. Know, how are they rich? It, you know they're rich in technology because it, it, clearly yes, they don't trade with anybody. It's no export. Exactly. So, but but that you know what? That's a point that uh, we would have to dig into the comics. Um, and mm-hmm. anybody below, if y'all know exactly where they get their money from, 
outside of vibranium because it's not like they're out there selling vibranium. We already know that's mm-hmm. not the case. So where does their funds come from? Or is it are they rich just in resources? Which we already know because they're yeah. based in Africa. So we already know they're rich in resources and vibranium. I, so we know that. I, I stand on it that they're just rich in equip in uh in um resources. Yeah, and resources. I I stand on that. I don't think they have as much money as they sh- that we perceive to see. Like, hey, yeah, we just went and bought this building, you know, type deal. Because they're they they clearly they don't kept trade. This, yeah, you know, they clearly kept their most prized possession as a secret. They clearly didn't want nobody about it. They clearly didn't want nobody coming into their. You know, they didn't want to bring nobody there. Other than other than Cap, other than uh. Cap, it, it, yeah, Captain America, the Winter Soldier, and mm. that white dude mm-hmm. <laughs> from the movie. <laughs> Who else has gone to Wakanda that we know of in this this Marvel universe? Story? Nobody. Yeah, so it's, that's what I'm saying. Like you, you gotta, you gotta think of that. You gotta keep that in mind too. So I, I'm not. See, I'm not picky with the de- with the depictions. I'm glad it turned out the way it did. Oh yeah. For him to go back and say, yo. My uncle died there. He wasn't awarded the proper, you know. And then even even Killmonger's dad was like, yo, I came here and the way they're treating their people is this, that, and the third. Like, I, f- I was like, yo, man, I feel that. That's right. some like, you know. But then for him to do what he did, you know, it kind of was like, yo, well, the, the king has spoken, dog. <laughs> yeah, like fall <laughs> you know, in line. Yeah, pretty much. But I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the movies. I'm, I'm enjoying the conversations. Uh, I, what I don't like is the. Well, I'm not say I don't like it. I do. I enjoy all parts of the conversations. I, I'm just here to, to give my point on, you know, especially on Killmonger. I think, a lot of people's gonna say they they relate to Killmonger, more than they relate to um, to anybody else. But because that's what we know, mm-hmm. you know, X. Somebody in that situ- in the flip side to that, how would they have treated it? And other totally, the totally opposite. And speaking on on uh, Killmonger or Michael B. Jordan, let's talk specifically about him. Him as an actor, when has he never sound cheesy? You're actually really right. I w- I just watched Creed today. <laughs> Fruitville, Fruitville Station was cringy at some point. Yeah, and then even Creed had his cringy one liners. He, yeah. He's a he's been in a lot of movies, and, and he I, really puts it down for Oakland, though. Yeah, he <laughs> hey, any chance he get, any chance he okay. get, he's town business. Um, yeah, I just I trip out. I don't know. I maybe I expected. More. Let me tell you this though about Killmonger. Anytime a movie or a TV show can make me feel for the bad guy, it's immediately a classic. Because that's what makes it. It's easy to feel for the good guy. It, it's it. That's of course. that's the point. That's you natural. Know, that's natural. But when you can make me feel like with Daredevil, when you can make me feel bad for Wilson Fisk, when you can yeah. make when you can make me feel bad for Cottonmouth and Luke Cage, when you can make me feel bad for the Man in Purple on uh, Jessica Jones, when you can make me get all fucking emotional and tie up with Killmonger. Like, cause I'm sitting there and I'm like, damn, I get it. I completely 100% understand. Like hey, without this question. Is I, I, this is why I stand behind my argument with the Decepticons. The, people think that they're, they're portrayed as e and that's a, that's a story for another day. This is just my opinion. No, we can jump on they're, it. Go as, uh, as evil things that just want to kill, but. It's everyone's natural instinct to survive. Yep. <laughs> so um, I, I bring that argument up a lot. And some people think I'm crazy for talking about that. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, when you run into somebody that's just naturally evil, like like dude from uh, the Joker Game of Thrones or the Joker. Let's use him as an example. He's mm-hmm. just naturally evil. Yeah. He just wants bad because he wants bad. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. Some people just want to see the world burn. You know that's that's really what it is, like. That was nine. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But no, I see. I 
that this is my whole that's my whole point in talk on that is that like yo when if you're just naturally evil with no cause you're just like there's just nothing behind you but when you stand for something and you 100% believe that you're right and it's not like far far to the right or left or whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it it's something that some people can relate to it's like yo i, I get where he's coming from have you seen the new kingsman golden circle yes okay yes. the drug the the main villain i actually respected what she said now we're not gonna sit here and shoot politics but mm-hmm. she was talking about how because she was a big time for those who don't know super spoiler the main villain in the new uh the new kingsman golden circle is this big time drug dealer and she's like on a world scale um yeah she said it she was like if i if drugs were legal I would be the Forbes top money earner in all the world. But the fact yeah. that it's illegal, all my riches, I can't spend it. I can't do anything with it. She can't do no- She couldn't leave her she secret island or wherever yeah, she was. Yeah, yeah, she couldn't do nothing. It was just all this money. Mm. But it was the whole thing of the legalization and whatnot that I completely understood. And I was like, okay, I'm not. I got. Yeah. Like, I, I felt, I, I felt for her. I watched the movie and I was like, yo, I kind of get it, man. Because look how fast in the movie, look how fast it showed the government switching. Uh-huh. Oh, we'll just let them all die. We're going to pretend like we're going to uh-huh. do it. Now, I'm not saying that I'm not here to say that's how it would rock or it wouldn't rock. But to see that happen like that, it's like, yo, I relate to her. Yep. You know, when it when it comes to that ide- or parts of that ideology, but the, the violence and the chaos, I'm not really for that. You True. know, so. Yeah, man, Black Panther, dog. Um, I recommend it. Um, I think as of right now, I'm gonna give it a nine. Oh, a yeah. solid straight nine, man. Oh, yeah. I, I think I'm sitting here talking about it and discussing it. I think when you when you brought up Michael B. Jordan, I just he has never. I, I'm pretty sure he's a cool dude in person, but as an like, I've never seen him in a role where he wasn't cringy. <laughs> like where it wasn't. It, 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 like. Oh man, I just uh like, come on. Even in Fruitville Station where and that was a great movie. True. In Fruitville Station when when he was in the jail and the dude walked by them and he he started cussing the dude out. I was like I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, can so, we just go back to yeah. the hardball days? But uh it, or or that <laughs> yeah hey it just but yeah man for some reason anytime he said anything more than two cent, two lines it felt cringy his one liners were epic like when he first but, walked in and he was like sup or <laughs> <laughs> or uh Listen. oh no go ahead so what you were saying? oh no 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 but his one liners are a one in that movie and but yeah. then and but then let's be realistic. Comic books are are cringy. They get kind of cringy, and they're very not often, but a lot of the time, especially yeah, golden age animated. comics. Yeah, but I'm talking. Those are animated, though. Like, I know. When, when you're watching a real human being, you're not expecting it to be like. <laughs> I don't know if I would have said it like that, or <laughs> who wrote that. I'm, I'm you know, gonna tell you this you though. Like let me let me tell you this though, and I, I'm gonna play the race card right now. Why is it that Loki get to always live and come back and get a second chance? But Killmonger, he don't make it. He get one shot, one kill. That was it. He get one chance. Loki over here then took okay, over but, took over Asgard six times and a half. I, I, let me, let no, me tell you rationalize why. it. Rationalize it. Let me tell you why. Loki, Loki is conniving. Loki isn't straightforward. You never know what Loki's thinking or when he's going to switch. And Thor's kind of dumb. Michael B's Jordan. Michael B's uh, Michael B. Jordan's character was straight to the point. I came here for one thing and one thing only. All the extras, I'm not worried about it. I'm ready right now. That And that's exactly what his character said. So he was straight to the point, straight to the punches. I'm not dealing with the extras. And that's was, that was his downfall, to be honest. Mm. When he, he's not thinking. If he had no ace in the hole. Villains, yeah, when you're looking at the two villains, look at villains that play that role that just go straight to it like and then they they never they never end up lasting but when you got somebody like loki who 
always got something, always got the trick card in the back, always got the smoke bomb to disappear. He always got one. Why you got to undermine That's my race it. card? <laughs> it's, it's Black History Just Month, saying, man. and you gonna undermine my race card? Okay. Hey, well, I'm, let me let you let me let you know something, man. You you know this. I love the Marvel Universe, and I, I just call it how I see it. <laughs> so, I'm hey, sorry to destroy you, but hey, hey, no, you you know what's uh, uh you know what? Let's let's kind of keep it going with the Black Panther thing, and I want to talk about okay. the Black Panther album. Now, that Black Panther oh. soundtrack is I'm what I really right w- let me tell you. That's what I wanted from Kendrick Lamar's album. I feel like that Black Panther soundtrack is Kendrick Lamar's best album. Outside of Good Kid, Mad City. I, I, I haven't heard it, so I, I can't really speak to it. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I do know that um, I heard a couple songs on it, and it, it sounded like the, the songs that I did hear, they sounded like anthems to a song or to a movie. Mm. And this is why I, I think it was a song with Future, Him, and... No, 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 no. Yeah, oh, J Rock. And at the end of the song, he rocking, and the last word he say is something, 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 Killmonger. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, yo, that, that sounded like it was speaking to a specific point. <laughs> and I was like, yo, let me not listen to the album first. Let me listen, let me watch the movie first. Because the move, mm. this album is based off of the movie. So watch the movie first, then listen to the album. I, so I got it downloaded right now. I, I'm a, I'm gonna tell you this straight out. I I feel outside of Good Kid, Mad City, and Section Eighty, this is his best album. Because in my opinion, it's a Kendrick album. TDs all you over it. Re- like <laughs> you gonna revert? We you you know I'm a you know I'm a listen to it. You know we gonna revert? Oh yeah, we, and we gonna go back to it, and we can, we can have that debate slash discussion. Okay, it, it may it may not even be a debate. It may just be you right. right. <laughs> you right. Now like now okay. So jumping over into kind of more stuff that we've been getting into, and uh, Ooh, such. No, let me let me intro let me introduce. Oh wait, you you about to talk into streaming, no. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. All right, all right. So we just all right. So we just got done talking about Black Panther. I'ma officially introduce my boy Baron J six seven as a Twitch affiliate. I wish we had like trumpets. Trumpets. All right, I'm gonna get a soundboard. <laughs> I want to sound. I want to sound like a pit bull. Like intro live concert. <laughs> oh man, Hovey song. Hey, man. Listen, my my boy has been grinding. He's been grinding. He's been streaming way more than I have. <laughs> and now uh, he he just got a he, he just got the affiliate status. Congratulations, homie! Congratulations. Bro, thank man, thank you so much, dude. And shout out to Johnny, man. Shout out to Yarl. Shout out to Corey Hooks. Shout out to For the Views. Shout out. His name is to, Corey Hooks. What? Yeah, Corey Hooks is the real man. Shout out to <laughs> Streamers Hideout. It's uh tricks. Everybody, shout out Chubby Gamer Girl. All y'all made this super possible, man. I shout out to your computer. Oh, shout out to my computer that's probably running super hot right now. Thank God for the fans. But it, it's it's so crazy because that process has been so intense, and I've been like you said, I've been busting my hump, man. Um, I think in the month of for this month of February alone, over 50 something hours worth of streaming, which when you think about it, isn't that much, uh, in the grand scheme of things, but the editing videos, the clipping, the communication, f- finding moderators. Maybe. Yeah. The man. And then trying to have a life on top of all of that. It, it's, it's been intense, but I've, I'm like paid to play games now. In a small sense, Congrats, man. yeah, like it, it's it's real trippy, you know. And once again, I say it all the time. I got a million and a half videos, and I probably say it in every podcast we got. Folks, please follow your dreams. Please set goals. Uh, oh, that's actually a quote I wanted to say, um, and I forgot who wrote it, but basically, it's impossible to hit a target that you cannot see, 
and that you aren't looking and that's not there. And I know that sounds redundant, but the whole point is if you don't have a goal in visual sight, as in written down a picture of it, anything, or it's not actually a goal at all, like you don't even have one, what can you hit? What are you aiming at? So what are you spending your time yeah. on? Ask Killmonger, because he was king for like a day. <laughs> Man, because once he became that's, that's my theme, son. That's my theme right there, B. That's what I'm about Man. to grow my hair like him. Hey, right? <laughs> Look, I'm already I'm working my way there. Let me just twist up just a <laughs> little bit more. Get my killmonger on. But um but no oh, man. But seriously, man, like I, I, I take goal setting really serious and I know I harp on it all the time. People are probably tired of hearing it, but it makes all the difference in the world. And it's it's scary when when things are it, it's scary in a sense of it throws me off that all of a sudden everything lines up. Everything just yeah. it all of a sudden um Discord staff member for Streamers Hideout. All of a sudden our podcast is doing really good. All of a sudden I get a Twitch affiliate. Everything just boom, 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 boom. And that just lets me know I'm on the right path and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So Hey man, like, thank like you. I said, congratulations on me. And uh hey, tell them what game you're actually playing. I haven't uh, really been playing nothing new. I went back to Destiny, but you, on the other hand, have been playing something new. My oh, friend. What, what is that? Okay, so I've been playing this. Hey, hey you like my segues though? You, yeah, you like your segues is on point today, man. He on me. Got, I he on front, got the man. camera. I just, I just said, it's T's on it. It's T's on it. <laughs> but, uh, so War Horse Studios. Um, they actually started this game as a crowdfunding game like four years ago. And I want to say 2014 and they didn't make enough. And then they started crowdfunding on their own. The first they went through Kickstarter and then they went on their own. And then they actually signed up with deep silver to help them finish the publishing. Well, long story short, this is a realistic RPG medieval game with no it's not um, there's no dragons it's no mythical creatures you plant you're fighting against humans but the trippy part is with this game is how realistic it is you have to eat you have to shower um, you you gotta fix your clothes you gotta um, if you if you get hit over you can hurt your legs you could your armor gets damaged your so you have to go and sharpen your sword it for somebody like me who loves to sink a hundred plus hours into games, this has definitely been that game. And I'm it's called oh I'm sorry, I haven't seen it said the name. It's called Kingdom Come Deliverance. Kingdom Come Kingdom Deliverance. Come Deliver. It's on PC, it's on Xbox, it's on PlayStation 4. It's it's an amazing game, man. Like this is a small studio and they really got together and they took those, they took real events and real areas and that's what you're playing in. So, okay. It, so let me, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Um, cause everything you just said to me sound like a, one of my favorite games. Uh, what do you think is better? Kingdom come to is kingdom come deliverance, uh -huh. right? King kingdom come deliverance or fallout four or any fallout fallout three. Cause you just, that's what the game sounds like to me. Okay. Um, only reason I would not compare them is for the simple fact that um, not even outside of the whole nuclear fallout and post-apocalyptic world, but as in game mechanics, I would call Fallout 3, all fallouts outside of the originals, a shooter more than I would fall, uh, uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Because Kingdom Come Deliverance, it's a melee game. In sense of when you're fighting, you actually have to aim where you're going to like you got to move and attack based on their defense and it's super intense. Like you got to chain together combos and it, it just I wouldn't the, which one I would have. I play I will play more will probably Kingdom Come Deliverance for the simple fact that even every fight feels hard. There's no there's no ghouls. Every fight from a peasant to a to a night every fight feels real feels like you're gonna die <laughs> like, catch that fight that fighters you know, fighters punch huh? man Not you can be minding your business going through the woods and all of a sudden somebody is say hey give me your give me your stuff 
and run up on you and they got an axe. And if they catch you slipping, like let's say you just got into a battle. Or you could be fighting more more than one person and you'll be g- dealing it in, going at it, and all of a sudden somebody will crack you over the head with an axe. Boom. Done. Like, so that's why I say I wouldn't compare them. Um, I love them both separately. <laughs> but for the simple fact, but one thing I will say is I'm going to sink more time in the kingdom come. Okay. Yeah, because when when you brought the game up to me and I looked into it some more and I heard people talking about some of the mechanics and the things you could do, um, it felt like it sounded like like a fallout. Like, mm. okay, or Sky different Rim. limbs hurting you. Mm-hmm. Or Skyrim. Different mm-hmm. limbs can, can break or you can hurt. Uh, weapons can lose its... Uh, not only lose its... Um, its efficiency, but its value as the efficiency goes mm-hmm. down, uh, you know, stuff like that. And that when when uh, this dude or when you just said just now it being a melee, the first thing I thought in my head, I'm like, well, shit. Has anybody ever ran through Fallout? Melee only? Between Fallout 3, Fallout 4, melee only? <laughs> Has anybody <laughs> ever tried that? <laughs> That act- that that sounds epic. That, that sounds epic as hell until you come across a death claw, like, it, yeah. and then you all socking a death claw out in vats. <laughs> poop, poop, poop. You ever you ever been slapped in Fallout Three? I used to get slapped like by behemoths and stuff, mm-hmm. and then like you have to watch your character get up if you're playing in third yeah. person. Probably. Yeah. So, um, I guess. That that was the one thing I thought about. That's why I asked you about it because I, it sounded like Fallout. But not. But you know what? I'm, I am going to say this one thing that that made Kingdom Come Deliverance look epic. You was in a fight. I was watching your stream. You was in a fight, <laughs> and you grabbed the dude by the back of his head like this. Oh, is he? What is he doing, <laughs> bro? The fist fights on that game. I actually like getting in the hand to hand combat fights more than mm-hmm. anything else in that game because it feels like I'm playing like an intense fight night. But it's yeah. not a boxing game. So I'm sitting there moving around, I'm throwing a jab, throwing a jab, coming in, throwing a jab, and then all of a sudden the guy will catch me with a good combo and I'll start losing health and then I'll bounce back, get my stamina back up and then come back in, I'll kick him and then throw a, I'll yeah. fake a jab and then feign a, a cross and then come across it. it. Oh man, it feels like I'm playing fight you, night. You really in the fight. <laughs> Get your fight on. Huh? Oh my gosh, man! And then now I got this sword, and I'm, I'm talking about specific weapons now. I got the sword called the Assassin Blade. It's it's heavier than other swords. Why does that weapon sound like something you would use off the rip? Just it's all- certain <laughs> certain certain names of weapons. When you tell me the name, I'm like, man, that sound like a gun. But Baron would use right. Like, <laughs> like a pistol dude. I got this sword called Take All. That sound like a gun you would use. <laughs> It, it, <laughs> it it's so it's so damn intense that it, it's got a heavy weight to it and it's meant to cut mm-hmm. like it's meant to just go through any type of material except armor of course oh and that's another thing yeah. i i keep a mace on me for when i fight people in heavy armor because me with my sword against people in heavy plated armor it does nothing like i'm just all you hear is tink 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 tink, tink. It sounds like I'm hitting a shield. So what I'll do is I'll switch to my mace and be bashing their brains. <laughs> like, and it's it's. I just love it's how bro. man. And then there's no reticules. Like when I'm shooting my bow, I had to learn the. It took me like fifty to sixty shots of random just shooting at nothing to figure out how the arrows work. It, it just. And then oh, the only way to boost your stats is to actually do what you're, whatever that is. So if I wanted to bring my speech up, I got to go talk to people, got to trade, I got to sell mm-hmm. stuff. If I want to boost my strength, I got to fight. I got to use different strong, heavy weapons. If I want to get my charisma up or if I want to, oh, hands down, I'm going to shut up about this game after this. This would let me know how intense it was as an RPG. And this is when I really fell in love. So I went to go make uh, some, I went to go brew some liquor because in order to quick save in the game, you got to drink a liquor, which is super expensive. What? Yeah. It's not, yeah. Ju- you can't just quick save. No, 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 no. You got to drink a limited amount of liquor that you have. So I went to go brew it and I found a, I found a book with the, uh, with the recipe in it. 
So I go to the place to brew it. And of course, it's got the bellows, the fire, the everything. Well, I opened the book and my care. I couldn't read anything. I thought it was like I thought it was a glitch. Come to find out my character didn't learn to read yet. So because I didn't know how to read, like his reading skill wasn't high enough, I couldn't read the book. So I had to go to another town and spend five days in game and learn how to read there. And then I could go back. Bro, that How much did that piss you off? Oh, I loved it. No, I loved it. Because I'm like, of course... Of course he didn't know how to read. He's a squire. He's not even a squire. He's a blacksmith's son from a poor town. That would piss me off. You, you imagine playing the game. You know how hard it was back in the day to play Sega Genesis? Ooh. You had no memory card. Can you ma- remember playing Grand Theft Auto 3 with no memory card? Ooh. You know how pissed off I would have been? I would have been, been hot. He's like, wait, I can't read it because I can't read? <laughs> Okay, save. <laughs> Bro, that that is the whole for me, that was the whole thing. That was the whole get down. And that's why I'm hooked on it. Shout out to Warhorse Studios. Shout out to Tobias, uh, the PR guy over there, real cool dude. Uh connected with him on Twitter. It just they 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 made a beautiful game, man. And actually I'll be making more videos and stuff about it. I don't think I've put any content out about it except streaming. But it, it's yeah, because you've been playing it. Yeah, I've been playing the hell out of it. You've been in, in, enjoying it, man. Hey, like I said, when you when I heard about the game and you were telling me about it, I was like, oh man, that's, that sounds pretty cool. Then I seen you whooping that dude's ass. I said, whoa, this looks intense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh <laughs> Grabbed man, the dude by the back of his neck and started <laughs> kneeing the mess. mess out of <laughs> oh, but yeah, man. Um, so uh, other, uh, I guess. I haven't really been doing anything new. Um, I haven't really been playing anything new. Still got my uh, DBZ uh, campaign going on. Nice. Uh, how, back into how, some okay. Dead. How do you like the new Dragon Ball Z? Because for me, I've heard that it's super simple. I've heard more. I've heard a lot of complaints. But you tell me what you feel about it. Dra- this this new Dragon Ball Z is anybody can pick up. They. I read an interview on it, and they said if you can do a Hadouken, you can play the shit out of this game, and it's true. Uh, <laughs> everything is Hadoukens. <laughs> everything is Hadoukens. When I say it's down, diagonal, forward, everything, all the supers, all the special moves, it's a Dukins. That's <laughs> that's as epic. It don't need get no better than that. Now, I will tell you this though. The um the 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 the, the playability in it, it's it's just a fun game. Okay. Um I don't uh it's a fun game. Uh you you're especially somebody that likes to try to do the combos and stuff on his own, like not trying to look them up, things like that, seeing what I can do from what I can't do, um, things like that. Inside the game, I'm still messing with them. I'm still trying to learn how to juggle, how to you know rotate into a juggle, things, stuff like that. Um, other than that, the game is real simple. My one of my the biggest gripe I'm having with the game now is the storyline. As of right now, is straight trash. Um, <laughs> it's just straight trash. Like they could have went so many different ways with this game, and they decided to to take this. And then like it's not even a fluid like storyline it's not even a fluid campaign like it gets to a cutscene and then you'll be able to like sit and watch it no i got to interact with the with the campaign with the storyline and push x every time a character is about to talk you know how trash that is you know how upsetting that is you know how upsetting it is i'm sitting here watching it and i I forget to push x and i'm like okay oh i gotta push x he's all waiting for the next line (laughs) that shit is booty man and that I I don't like that because this could have just been they could have just put the story and then the storyline is oh man my, I, to be honest that's my only problem with the game and it's a big problem because I'm playing the story mode trying to learn how to play the game trying to learn how to do the juggle the juggles trying to learn how to to you know switch into characters what characters I like and I'm trying to play with these wet Krillin sucks. 
Krillin sucks. Like, I'm not about to use Krillin. Boo is trash. Not Kid Boo, but Fat Good Boo. He's trash. I don't like <laughs> playing with none of these right. characters. Gotenks is trash. Uh, man, I'm telling you, I was sitting here trying to play with some of these characters and getting so frustrated because, and then, like, all the buttons are the same, so it's not about learning the buttons. You could pretty much use any character, and if you know how to use one, you know how to use them all, pretty okay. much. Okay. Oh, I'm playing with him because he, he looked better. Or I'm playing with him because I like the way his super is. Or, you know, that's it. Like, there is no difference. In, that's in terrible. <laughs> I was, and it's funny you saying that because I was. My next question for you about it was going to be: Do you think this game is going to stand the test of time? Well, I was about to say f no, but heck no. <laughs> the reason why I say that is because, um, <laughs> the reason why I say that is because it's. I, to be honest, I like watching pros play it. Okay, but I can't sit and watch you like all day. I can't go to a FGC tournament and watch it. FGC, I get bored. what's that? Seeing the same like. Keem, listen, when you go watch a Street Fighter tournament or a Mortal Kombat tournament, um, you get to see people use their mains. Now, I'm not saying that it's like it's a bad thing to use the person that you're good at in competitive scene because you're trying to win. True. But when everybody does the same thing, everybody's your main. Mm. So Just, oh, yeah, he's short, but he's tall. Oh, he, he can stretch his arms. He can't. Uh, oh, you telling me that? I don't. And then, then well, another thing that pissed me off is Vegeta's super isn't even a Gallic gun. Is it's the final, final flash? flash. In <laughs> final. <sighs> it's, it's final flash, and then it's um the Big Bang attack. Big what? Bang. One of his most famous moves is the Gallic gun, where he turns his hand like retarded. It, I'm sitting there like. What are we doing? I was so frustrated playing this game. And it's, it's, it's more irritating as I talk about it more. Literally, I sat here and I was writing my notes on the game. Thank you. And I got so upset at the game that I just stopped writing notes. I started. I just left the notes alone. I'm like, I'm about to finish this and I'm probably never going to play it again. I'll probably play it if like the kids come over. I, I, was, I play my daughter in it. <laughs> I play my wife in it, but, but that's okay. it. You may come over and say, hey, man, let's play a game. All right, we can play some Street Fighter for like 10 minutes and you, then you, play some, or some Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> but other than that, the game is, I think it's, if if they just gave me the fighters without the story mode, I would have probably gave it a high score. Ah, uh, so you're saying they, they forced the story when they should have just made an arcade fighter. Yeah, but the problem is you can't make an arcade. You can't make arc. You can't make Dragon Ball Z a fighter without a story mode. Hey. It's based off of story. You it's don't remember the old arcade mode. ones, the old two D arcade ones. Those were dope. Yeah, but but Do you, okay. Let me story. Let me, the let me, Game Boy had a, had some type of like let, mission that you had to get to. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. I used to go out of my way because there's a skating rink. Um, there was a skating rink, and I don't skate. But I would go there because <laughs> they had the drag. Point that out. <laughs> yeah, they they put a Dragon Ball Z to. Uh, it was, I forgot which one it was. It was uh, it was clearly an import. It was a two D fighter, and it was beautiful. You would get knocked in the mm-hmm. sky, and all of a sudden, like your screen would split in half, and then you'd be in the sky, and the guy'd be on the ground, and he'd jet up, and then y'all'd be fighting. It was so old, you could kind of tell that you had to make a digital ground, so like the sky yeah. looked like it was a floor. But it was, oh my god, it was so much fun. And um, Super Saiyan Trunk, uh, Go, uh, Gohan was the best. Team Gohan was the best on there. Man, I don't even know why they got Gohan in this game. Stop it. They got Team Gohan. Team Gohan don't even go Super Saiyan no more. You, you ain't been watching the show, huh? He lost his drive to fight. Team Gohan, the supposedly strongest Super Saiyan, he trash now. His daughter's stronger than him. <laughs> I'm being dead serious. <laughs> in this game, the only tr- Gohan that goes Super Saiyan is, is the bait. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Teen Gohan goes Super Saiyan. Adult Gohan oh, don't go Super Saiyan. Okay, I can li- I can live with that. Cause honestly, once uh, what was his How name? Can you live with that? Great Great Saiyan Man or whatever his name was. Like, yeah. remember when all that went down? I I just how do you go from the dopest 
I'm going to sit here with my dad's spiritual help and kill Cell to, I just want to sit down and be a superhero. And I want to <laughs> lose my Super Saiyan ability for a sword that it's actually an elder that now. I blame Chi Chi. I blame Chi Chi. Yeah. yeah. Send him to school. I hope Gotenks is a rebel his whole life. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Gotenks stays like his daddy, like forever. Like he just and hey, I've been watch. I I'm all caught up on the. Uh, it took me like a week to get all caught up on the Dragon Ball Z's. I watched like all 100 and uh, I think it's like 128 episodes. Jesus Christ! And I watched them all, and uh, so far, uh, I'm kind of mad that you tagged me in that post when I was all caught up. Hey, these are all fillers. I'm like, uh, really? Oh, uh, <laughs> really, dog, bro. <laughs> You you know who's okay. Speaking on that, we'll we'll jump back to Dragon Ball Z Super because I'm gonna need you to school me because I'm gonna go ahead mm. and lose my nerd card. I haven't watched none of it. Um, I will say this: Bleach, in my opinion, the show the the anime Bleach had the worst the worst fillers. It would feel like thirty episodes, and I I swear I would just sit there like. And then it would jump back to what really mattered. Like, they would go off on this adventure that has nothing to do with nothing. <laughs> like, and I'm like, are they giving new artists a break? Are they, what What are we doing here? Like, what? what is the point of all of this? I, I just, it broke yeah, my heart. Right there. Yeah, like, how, mm-hmm. Sway? But, man. Oh, so, speaking, go ahead. Back to Dragon Ball Super, because I, I have no idea. All right. So, so far in Super, we're at the Tournament of Power. Uh, it's only two people left. Uh, are you, do you know what the, are you familiar with the Tournament of Power? Uh, with everybody trying to be God's discre- destruction and all that other good stuff? Oh, uh, okay. No. No, but I know what you're talking about. You're talking about Topo or Topo or whatever you say his name. Well, what happened in the, the Tournament of Power, and it's all Goku's fault. Goku went to the God of everything. And because he said, yeah, we're going to probably hold a tournament. He went and went to the God of everything and said, yeah, are you ready to turn, make that tournament? The God of destruct, the God of everything or the two gods of everything, because he brought, he, he brought a God of everything to an alternate universe. Wow. And now he lives there. So it's two of them. So now he says, Hey, um, yeah, you guys are going to start this tournament. And they say, yeah. So they decide to say, okay, this is what we'll do. We'll bring, the the i think it's like the seven weakest uh universes and we'll put them all in this battle royale type tournament and wh- whoever has their 10 players if your 10 players get tur- get knocked off the state the fighting stage your universe gets erased <laughs> wow so so far it's only two universes left universe 7 and universe 11 which is uh we have Goku fight up against Jiren and uh, I don't know if you've been watching. I know it. about Jiren, Goku. though. Oh yeah, well it, it's it's on a new it's on a whole new playing field now. <clears throat> Goku went Ultra Instinct, which is like a, it's like a it was like a a myth amongst gods, like this this type this person that can reach this level of power where they could be able to to stand up with a god, and they're saying that this is what Goku has ascended to. Pause. He, you know how he did it? He did it dope, though. Like the way they did that part was amazing. I'm glad I didn't miss that episode. He he to a uh, he was finally about to fight uh, Jiren, and Jiren was whooping his ass. So he he was like, all right, you know, you know what Goku goes to is always his ace in the hole, spirit bomb. He puts his hand up. Everybody's giving them powers and whatnot, and he throws the ball at Jiren, and Jiren catches it with one hand and throws it back, <laughs> throws it back at him. And he he basically dies. Well, the 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 they say well they were saying that um in the show they were saying that Jiren didn't kill him because you can't kill in the tournament of power. Yeah, you can uh you have to knock him off the stage. If you kill, you get disqualified. Well, they they said Goku killed himself. He incinter- he disintegrated himself because it was his his thing. Well, what happened was he went to a different realm or some shit. And he absorbed the whole, uh, he absorbed the spirit bomb. 
and the power from the spirit bomb brought him up to ultra instinct and he was he was legit like he has this blue glow around him he's like he's it looks i thought dope. he was already a super it's, saiyan god though yeah he, well what happened was he reached super saiyan god and then there's a there's a different form of it it's okay a, the, the blue version or the red version is super saiyan god the blue version is super saiyan god but it's the it's the controlled version okay it's like you're like how trunks how trunks was almost super saiyan 2 yeah like okay just get big yeah but this one is it's more controlled so he can he can get controlled super saiyan god and then this next level is the ultra instinct it's the it's the form that like has surpassed everything and now you're on the same level as a god like you now, got that type of deal now you know my next question is what what what's goku's next level what where's goku, goku gonna have no levels Go, goku every time we think the writers and hey it's a dude on facebook i swear i'm gonna shout you out one day i've been watching his videos and he was like uh he was like yeah uh goku only won goku's only winning because the power of the pen oh <laughs> power of the pen. Ooh. and it's true because yeah. jiren jiren is nothing like they faced before jiren literally literally this is what, let me tell you how badass jiren is jiren was fighting he was fighting them and then after he he after he thought he had beat goku he sent goku flying he went and started meditating in the middle of the battlefield <laughs> like he literally put up a force field <laughs> and started meditating and people were throwing energy balls at him and they he wasn't even blinking and topo looks at him and says he's not gonna fight you because you're not worthy <laughs> I said no. Ooh, not the Okay, no. so this is something I need to know. Is it like organized or is it like, hey, y'all just get out there and duke it out? Y'all just get out there and duke it out. If you get knocked off, you're off this you you lose. You basically you get knocked off. Well, see, the players can't fly because uh, the gravity in the universe that they're at is called the void. They're at the void. Got you. Where they're at, it won't allow them to fly, but they can still do use all their powers. They can jump as high as they can jump and do all that extra stuff. But once you get knocked off into the abyss, you, your body gets transported back to the spectator's box. Now, I'm going to tell you why they keep doing my boy Vegeta dirty. Vegeta, Vegeta went all out against Jiren. Like he went, he he got to a like a like a sub level of Super Saiyan God, where his head, <laughs> and they did him dirty too because. His hair is like light blue, and then this level is like a little bit darker light blue. <laughs> oh, I'm like, damn! They could give they could give him a whole, like a like a navy blue. <laughs> they gave him like a like a little tint. powder. Here's it's there's some powder. <laughs> they hit him with this blue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, this last episode that happened, um, Vegeta was fighting Jiren, and he fought him with everything he had, and Vegeta just kept coming back. And uh, you know how stubborn he is, and he they they knock Vegeta off, and Vegeta, you know how he is when it comes to him and and uh, Goku, he takes the last bit of energy he has and tosses it up to Goku, and mm. Goku takes it and it powers up and he starts fighting Jiren, and this this is how it ends, Goku's about to get knocked off and he's standing there with his head down, and Jiren comes he powers up a punch. And when he pop, when Jiren powers up, he's all fire. It just looks like fire. He wants to punch Goku, and Goku teleports through him, and he's just standing there. And then that Ultra Instinct just pops on, and Jiren's trying to hit him, and he can't hit him. And Goku hit him for the first time and made him make that. You remember in animes when they get punched in the gut, they go, "Oh, yeah." Jiren did that like he had like the like the like you can see his eyes and everything. I, I'm, and that I'm was a, the first time they made him think. I'm gonna tell you. Jiren get to that point. I'm gonna tell you what the story of Jiren, because I only know of him through all of his great and glorious memes. All praise be to mm -hmm. Jiren. Um, <laughs> how plain he is. He looks like a nematode. Like he just looks like yeah. a. He he just looks like somebody got bored at work. It was like, oh man, this is the guy with no <laughs> facial features. Let's just put super big traps on him. <laughs> yeah, he, this is the guy that will defeat everyone in the universe. He got a he got a small ass like mushroom head and then he just super yoked like Ooh. like he looked like he <laughs> Bro, that's what I'm saying. He's just over there. 
he like an alien dog, but he just super big. Like he just yoke for no reason. Yeah, but yeah. um the the reason why the reason why I think he's a great character for the show is because he's not evil. You can't call him an ant. Uh, you can't call him a uh 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 the bad guy. Yeah. You can call. You have to call him the opponent uh, because he's fighting for the same thing you're fighting for. True. And he's trying to survive just as much as you're trying to survive. And he comes from like a like a like a superhero team from their universe called like the 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 Justice or some some shit. I don't know the League of Justice or whatever. And he don't fight or nothing. He just stand. There. He just stand. Let me tell you how strong he is. This dude punched somebody with his glare. I can't. They made a plain Chuck Norris. They made a space Chuck Norris out of Jared. I quit. I think I think it was I think it was Frieza. He punched Frieza with his glare. Like he looked at her or him. And oh, him. here we go. <laughs> nah, he ain't catching me this time. Frieza <laughs> Frieza is a dude. I did my research. Y'all right. I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, you know what, guys? Let's let's wrap it up on that note. So, once again, man, this is I'm Baron J. Again, give my boy a oh. follow on Twitch, man. He's Twitch affiliate. This is the 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 prime example of grind and getting it popping. Wakanda forever. As Cardi B would say. Wakanda forever. Hey, <laughs> tell me that dance they was doing wasn't dope. They was. <laughs> oh, they was. It was getting. It I was in. like, "Oh, I was like, okay, okay." I, I, man, you know, I was acting a fool in the theater. You know, I'm not quiet. I feel bad for whoever no, had to sit next to me. I seen you went dressed up. You, you oh yeah, you bro. I had up. my my custom because you know I'm big, so they had to basically <laughs> take a kid uh, a dashiki sheet and fold it over and put a, a hole through it. But it's all good though. I was looking. He said, he said, I got it from that. I got the fabric from the alley. Yeah, I went to the alley, and I was just like that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll take that one. That'll work. Go ahead, throw that over. You know, me. My, my my wife wanted to get dressed up like that, and I just wasn't for it. Cause you're a bum. You're a bum. You're terrible. Do it for the culture. I know. Nah. Oh, you went as Killmonger. If you should have just said you went as Killmonger. <laughs> if I if I could have wore the uh, wore a Black Panther suit, I would have. Oh. I worn that. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think they come in my size. <laughs> It'll be, it'll, be, it'll be like Black Pumba. My stomach hurts. My st- <laughs> he's in Black oh, Pumba. I got an headache. He's like Black Pumba. <laughs> Sign me up, bro. All right, guys. This is Barry J67. And I'm T. Jones. There's a, a silent X in front of that. And y'all have a good one. What's <laughs> le- oh, subscribe, subscribe, comment, follow. <laughs> Everything's in the description. It's all in the description. Much love. And we out.